Hi folks, uh, welcome to our Saturday video cast from iWrite Radio podcast because we'll make a podcast with the soundtrack and we're going to talk about a couple of articles today from our indie bloggers. Craig Murray's article basically destroying Danny Garvel's Dar Garvelli's article um, in support of the Salmon Accusers. Um, took it apart piece by piece. And Peter A. Bell. I think we'll start with uh, Peter's piece. He's not very happy with um, diktats from on high. Jimmy, your thoughts on the Peter A. Bell article? Yeah, I thought it was, it was all right. It was good, but it's really just what he's been saying for a while that he's kind of, like you say, he's not happy that campaigning was shut down by Nicola Sturgeon and that she particularly seems to irk him that she used the logo of Yes Scotland to take the mantle of leader of the Yes Scotland having previously avoided at all costs being seen as the leader of Yes Scotland, the Yes community, because some of the stuff that comes out clearly doesn't fit with SNP policy. But I thought to be honest, as I say, it's just a sort of rehash of what he said before. I didn't see any particular need to climb on the high horse this morning. And there's other fish to fry at the moment, in my opinion. Stuart? I can't disagree with that, Jimmy. Um, he could have written, he could have used 75% less words to say the same thing. That's true. Um, and Jimmy kind of said he's right. Um, what Peter is very angry about is using that Yes logo on her letter, telling everybody to stop campaigning and taking over leadership of the campaign for independence, which she's de desperately been avoiding for a long time. And the, I suppose one thing that Jimmy didn't say was that what Peter did say was that she'll live to regret it. Now that she's seen as the leader of the Yes movement, she will be held responsible for all the weirdos. I, I think what I picked up on most of it, it was the idea that the, um, oh, what's it called? Scottish campaign for... So Scottish Independence Camp Convention convention that's it scottish independence convention the idea that there's some sort of cut out go between between the yes campaign and the smp i i have real reservations about this crowd i don't see them as leading the yes movement at all and no no they've set themselves up for that i well I, they're, they're as far as i'm concerned being extremely presumptuous mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if they ask me as a member of the Yes campaign to vote for them, whole different ball game. I mean, the the Yes campaign. How do you identify the Yes campaign? I'm not a exactly. member. Of, I'm not a member of any Yes group. You know, but I campaign for independence in my way, and I certainly there's some good people in amongst them, but I'm. Don't particularly want to be led by them. Well, look, uh, she's, I mean, she's opened a can of worms. If you remember back to the referendum, there was an official yes campaign financed by the SNP. Uh, the leader, Blair Jenkins, appointed by the SNP. Uh, whereas the, the yes campaign that you and I would recognize over the last six years has not been led by the SNP. It's a completely gr uh, roots, ground up operation. It's not even an operation, it's a movement. Mm -hmm. well, exactly, I... it's, a, it's a disparate group of people who kind of want the same thing, but have many different ways of going about it. And frankly, things like public meetings, marches, um, online chats, that's, the, the small acorns that the oak grows from at times. And it, it, it seems a bit odd that all of a sudden we're all told to all stop on everything because of the virus and that it's a political operator 
at the level of First Minister, no less, who's telling us to stop campaigning and stop operating. I can, well, I mean, I can understand the reasons for it. If the Yes campaign started splashing everything about, you know, the accusations in the mainstream media are going to be, we're doing it on the back of coronavirus, blah, blah, blah. I mean, politically, I think I agree with Peter, she'd have been better just to stay stum when it comes Aye, to the Yes campaign, rather than right, issuing mate. orders. I think well, maybe he's right it. about that. Sorry, message Jimmy. control doesn't sorry, no message control doesn't work with a grassroots campaign, mate. We are not the party, and she has no right to assume the mantle of leadership and to instruct people to stop doing what they're doing. I think we're missing think one. She, what, we're, we're missing think, one point that that uh, Peter did make, which was um, the strength of the Yes movement is online, and yeah. there's nothing nothing to stop. The Yes campaign <laughs> carrying on online. Well, let's be honest, Peter's main, Peter's main point really is that she wants everything to stop because she stopped. The SNP have stopped pushing for independence and the virus came along at just the right time for her and had it not been the virus, something else would have cropped up. It was another way of pointing out Peter's main point that he feels that Nicola Sturgeon has let the side down and that there's no push for independence. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think she had any choice, I, and I think Peter made that point, but to put the SNP's independence strategy on hold. I mean, underneath well, the, the reality... Put it on hold before the virus. Yeah, but the reality is this is not just... Politically, this is an opportunity. I mean, she's mm -hmm. outshining all the politicians in the UK. Yeah. And the more she looks like an international, um, politically acceptable leader, the more kudos she gets, the better that looks when hung on an independence debate. I mean, and also you know, perhaps the uh, better the she may manage to stop the fire that is hinted at towards the end of Craig Murray's article actually reaching all the way to her office. She may manage to stop it at somebody else's desk. Mm. There's another issue altogether mm. we might be talking about. I still think there is uh, value in, um, but I think he's right, Peter Bell is right, to criticise Nicola Sturgeon for attempting to stop all campaigning. There's nothing wrong with campaigning online. And that, as he pointed out, it is a strength. Um, I think we should actually, given that we're criticizing Peter Bell's article, perhaps we should give Peter a, a chance to um, discuss it himself. Mm, could be right. Yeah. Mm, I've got his email somewhere. Um, well, if, if we're thinking in those lines, we'll move on. Craig Murray's piece. Stuart, you'll get the first bite of the cherry on this one. It was, like, <clears throat> right, we're talking about a critique of someone else's article, Danny Garavelli. Uh, Danny Garavelli's article was very well written from a, you know, from an academic point of view, a critique, yes, extremely well written, clever. But she left herself open. And so Craig Murray, who's not a, who is not too bad as a writer himself. I have rarely seen <laughs> such a such a forensic um, takedown of another person's writing as that. Uh, Craig Murray's, I mean, it's a long, long piece. And you don't actually want to give up. I mean, for such a long piece of, uh, a long article, you, you're, you're gagging to get to the end. Some people write long bits and you think, when is this going to stop? Aye. Talking about Jerry Hassan. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not picking on anybody here. Craig, uh, I worry about Craig's personal position because he's, I mean, for when you get your the photograph of your home splashed all over the Daily Record, um, it's scary times, isn't it? However, I... he did, 
Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. The, the last paragraph, um, if you give me one second, in the final analysis, the question Garvelli's article raises is whether the wider sweep of the feminist movement against a historical injustice justifies ignoring the actual facts and evidence in a particular case of one powerful but innocent man. I believe I know the answer. I'm not, I'm not sure that that's really what this is all about. I, I don't think you can pit Salmon's innocent against the drive of feminism. This is political in the, in the, in the sense of great, great Britain in the unionist cause rather than feminism. Well, I, we I don't think look, this is about feminism. No, we've got to join what we were just talking about. Uh, Peter Bell's criti- uh, criticism of Nicola Sturgeon. And Nicola Sturgeon's position, although she may not be mentioned in Danny Garavelli's article, but almost certainly is, but she's just this person in the background. We're all talk- it is a, polit- a hugely political issue for in Scotland today. Um, we are talking about Nicholas Turgeon, who's, who appears to be very happy sitting there as being First Minister of Scotland and not championing, championing the Yes movement. Independence seems to have been put on the back burner. And, and the argument f- for <coughs> the argument that says, the argument that Craig Murray's brought up and quite a few other people is that basically the SNP under Nicola Sturgeon has turned into the Scottish uh, devolutionist party. And as such, they're no, longer, they're no longer a danger to the unionists in London. And they're quite happy to, see, to support her in her fight with Alex Salmon, because Alex Salmon, without a doubt, was a disruptor. Who failed to win the last referendum. He took us very close to it. Who failed from almost to win, nothing? Who failed to win the last referendum? Well, there you go. But uh, do you think that Nicola Sturgeon's any closer? The numbers say she is. The numbers say that we're closer to, to independence now than ever. The reality might be somewhat different. But you guys are going on the um, the constitutional angle, the Craig Murray's thing. I'm more interested in the fact that a couple of bits of more evidence were reported. It was stated that woman A leaked the news of the Salmon investigation to the Daily Record. Straight away, that should be investigated by the police because that was an internal Scottish government investigation and had no reason being leaked by anyone to anyone. Well, we've been known that for years, though. No, we've known that women. Well, I never knew that women had leaked it. Well, we also know. Leaked it? The, we also know who, now, according to um, Craig Murray, we also know that she leaked it to David Clegg, who's now uh, editor of the the Courier. The presumption was always that the leak was down to Le- uh, Leslie Evans, mm-hmm. as I remember it, um, without any proof whatsoever. I should add. But the presumption was, that was floating about was always that it was uh, Ms. Evans that uh, that was responsible. But there was far more detail coming out of Craig Murray about what some of these accusers said on the stand, how they behaved on the stand, because none of that's been reported. The mainstream media, I mean, one of the big pieces of the takedown of this article by Danny Garavelli was that she never once mentioned any of the supporting evidence for the defence. The fact that seven women who didn't require anonymity stood in that courtroom openly and gave evidence that refuted some of the allegations and absolutely destroyed a couple of the allegations. We know, for example, that woman K, is it woman K? I think number one might be Miss H, who accused Sam and of groping her at a photo shoot and at a Christmas party in front of people. That was torn to shreds, and no, it's no wonder that the jury dismissed that charge. The, Some the, of them 
were certainly appear to have lied blatantly in that witness box because they had three people refuting what they said. And none of that was carried in Danny Garavelli's article. She well, can, kind I of point out, up the women yeah, without... can I point out one simple thing? Carry on, guys, in a second. But he did also point out that there were 40, 40 mainstream journalists in that courtroom. And Craig Murray was the only one that was barred. I think, well, when he pointed that out, he also pointed out that they closed their notebooks. Aye, that's when that's... the defence witnesses were, were being cross-examined. I, Aye, which... My problem here is that pe people are conflating two things. The fact that women should be listened to, whereas in the past they were dismissed. You know, oh, that's just part of the banter in the office. Didn't he worry about no, that? That's a bit touchy had to see. Well, that, what I'm saying is that, but they're conflating that. Well, conflating is the wrong word. They're using the salmon trial as a vehicle to underline what they seem to think is no change. Aye. And the well, fact the that that's Salmond it, has it, been through two different court cases and come out of both innocent, for want of a better word, not proven in one, in one case, but the fact that he's been through totally that ignored. is totally ignored. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, uh, reading that article, mate, this is, that's where this all came about. This came about for Leslie Evans and her chum. Decided Judith McKinnon. Decided Judith McKinnon, apparently, is the chum. They decided yeah. between them that Scotland needed its own very own Me Too moment. And that's where this started. There was one misdemeanor, shall we call it, one, I wouldn't even call it a misdemeanor, it was something that shouldn't have happened. Alex Salmon stated it shouldn't have happened, apologised for it at the time, and then that particular incident grew arms and legs and has completely changed meaning and happenstance. And I think, I believe there were three, possibly four, different descriptions of it from woman F, which is why the not proven verdict came in. Salmon admitted that something happened that shouldn't. He called it a cuddle. But um, the jury didn't clearly didn't believe it was anything like what it's now been made out to be, but hence the not proven verdict, which is effectively a not guilty. The rest of the stuff was just crap that they managed to dredge up after spending, what, a year to a year and a half stirring the pot and seeing what came to the top. Our, our and it's transcripts. been dismissed by a court. Are transcripts of court cases publicly available? They used to be, I think, in, in crimes of sexual thingy, they are heavily redacted. And as I'm not sure that the transcripts are available for this one at the minute, because I've not seen anybody yet who's published it. Well, I mean, I'm going to make the point that I've made several times that I have done no research in using the hints that have been dropped in various articles, including. Danny Garvelli's to try and identify any of these women, and I have no intention of doing that. But I just feel the longer this goes on, the more apparent it is that only one side of the story has been told from what happened in court. And as long as Craig Murray is the only person telling the other side, people are going to start to believe he is a Zoomer. I mean, he made a very good point yesterday on Twitter where he said it's interesting that the elite, meaning the press elite, now consider anybody that accepts a court decision as a Zoomer. Aye. Well, what we've got, Nori, is hints in Craig Murray's article that the judicial review will go ahead, but there's a possibility that Nicola Sturgeon will do some kind of deal with the unionist parties for the parliamentary review not to go ahead. Now, that would be scandalous because well, some, Jimmy, of, some of... I would love to see how they spin that because yeah, they were that, screaming I, I, I and shouting and beating difficult. their head off the desk. If Craig mm. Murray proves to be right about that, his reputation as a seer will go through the roof. 
go through the roof. I be at him every day to see it, give me the number, one of the three thirty at Cheltenham. But aye, the judicial <laughs> review has to go ahead clearly, and in the judicial review, I expect that the anonymity of all of the accusers will be maintained. I would think so. At a parliamentary review, they may very well try and maintain that, it'd be, but it'd be awfully difficult. Well, the, the interesting, the, the one they're all, the unionists are flagging up is the fact that one of the women stated she was at a meeting with Nicola Sturgeon about the Alex Salmon thing. What was she doing at the meeting? If she no, was are you sure it was one in the meeting? Was it not Je yes. uh, Je uh, uh, Jeffrey Aberdeen? It was Jeff Aberdeen that stated it, but he also pointed to the fact that that woman was there. And right. at, that point in, at that point in time, she had not informed Nicola Sturgeon that she was one of the complainants. Mm. She was going to be making a complaint against Sam and she. So, so that, she's senior well, enough to be in a meeting like that and yet is lying to the First Minister. So well, if she's yeah, going to lie to lying minister, by omission, go, possibly. But the point. Well, lying by omission is still a lie, Nori. We all can that. Well, what the point I'm kind of making here is how would that not be construed as conspiratorial? Exactly. If you're accusing the First Minister and you're going into meetings discussing what should be done about it with whoever makes that decision, I presume Leslie Evans was involved in it as well as Nic Nicholas Sturgeon, and then you're going to stand up and say, oh, Nicola said she wasn't at a meeting or it was four days before the first time she admitted to mm. discussing it. What, Aye, and that's where, if that that's isn't where conspiratorial? Issue, that's where Nicola's on a shugly peg as well, don't we? Because if she's lied to Parliament, there's no getting ruined lying to Parliament. There's only one, I'm sorry, but in the Scottish Parliament, there's only one answer to lying to Parliament, misleading Parliament, and that's to resign. I'm sorry, I, I invoke the Westminster defence. Well, you're allowed to lie in Westminster. You're allowed to do what you want now, Jimmy. No, in Howler Reed, you're not, mate. Nobody has lied to Parliament and survived it. Here's, here's a did, question for you guys. What did Henry right? McLeish lose, lose his job for? What did Henry McLeish Taxis. lose his job for? Taxis. Right. A, bit of, a wee bit of dodgy accounting. In fact, it wasn't even dodgy accounting. It was just shite accountancy, wasn't it? Was that he, was just sharing, he was sharing an office in Glenrothes with somebody else and then they were getting some rent or something. Christ, got you, up, couldn't he, even, you couldn't even buy a night out on the money that he supposedly fiddled. Aye. Aye, but that his, was, he that lost was, his reputation as well as his job on that. That was the problem, though. There was more than one incident, and it just mounted up. Right, guys, a question for you. I'm kind of going back to the common thread in Peter's piece and Craig Murray's piece. Nicholas Sturgeon, who do they think is going to lead the party? It's not Alex Salmond. No. Alex Salmond's never coming back from this as a party leader anyway. Who, who would you see replacing Nicholas Sturgeon? Well, no, let me put it another way. Would you like to see Nicholas Sturgeon replaced as SNP no. party leader? Uh, not at the moment. It's the wrong time. She's proving to be a very accomplished first minister at the moment, and apparently doing nearly all the right things. But that we could there's a, obviously I, there is an argument that she's following too closely what's happening in the Westminster, but that she doesn't have any options on that really without a huge row. Uh, but yes, no, I, I mean the, the most popular alternative, Joanna Cherry. Completely right. unproven. She's completely unproven in any leadership role whatsoever. She's only been in politics for five minutes. She could never assume the reins of leadership. It would have to be somebody who's already in Holyrood and already in the cabinet at Holyrood. Because, let's be honest, independence will come from Holyrood and our leadership should be coming from Holyrood. It shouldn't be anything to do with London. Well, if it's a matter of should, it should, it should be somebody that's proved that they're more interested in independence than um, promoting the women's cause. And I, see, I, that's where I fall, fall down with Peter Bell. I think he's wrong there. I think the fact that Nicola Sturgeon's been in the SNP since she was a teenager 
and the SNP's raison d'etre is Scottish independence automatically shows that she wants independence for Scotland. I just think she made she made a major faux pas in agreeing to a section or in stating that section 30 was the way to go. And she's found it impossible to back down for that. Well, that's two things, big mistake she's made. She's made a big mistake um, promoting the start of this investigation into Alex Hammond. Look where, how that's turned out. Right. Okay. She didn't I don't promote think she it. promoted it, mate. She didn't promote it. She allowed Leslie Evans to set up a system that was unfair. That's what am I, there. Am I forced to imagine a, a, a scene from Yes Minister and uh, Nicola Sturgeon saying whatever it is, and, uh, and sorry, Leslie Evans is just saying, Yes, Minister, yes, you're being very brave. Yes, you are, effectively, because it was none of uh, her business. This was a civil service system that was put in place. It, it, and Why she did couldn't Nicola interfere Sturgeon with get it. involved then? Well, she shouldn't have been involved. The, the only reason Nicola Sturgeon should know anything about it would be from the point of view of this is the ex-leader of the SNP and we're about to investigate him, First Minister. Heads up, because the press will be was, banging your door down about it. So I think it was Alex that went to her before the, any of the civil servants did. Well, we'll know more about the timeline when more comes out, but... I was under the impression that Alex Salmond was the first person to mention to her that this was going on. She certainly didn't. She Well, she said, whether she knew or not, who knows? Mm -hmm. But in Parliament, she said she didn't know before it yeah. was instigated. And it would have been wrong I, I've got a, for her to know. I've got a wee thing as well with Craig Murray where he, he, he goes on about fourth wave feminism. And I do worry about that. You know, um, there's a... There's definitely a problem when quite so many senior women are making complaints against anyone. But there's, def there's most definitely a problem where senior women are putting in place procedures and then going trolling for complaints. Nobody in this thing comes out looking well. But I would say Alex Salmond is an innocent man, according to the two senior courts in Scotland, and for Danny Garavelli to write a, a takedown piece like that and then other major unionist press to jump in behind her and tell you what a wonderful piece of work it is. And for it then to be taken down by an amateur, a blogger, that shows you pretty much the stink in all of this lies with the press more than anybody. I, I actually think it indicates how naive the head of the Scottish Civil Service is. Anybody with half a brain in their, head, in, their, in their head would have had a dry run. They wouldn't have well, that's picked, what I mean. They well, wouldn't that's have what I mean Alex Salmond. No, but that, that's what I mean about the scene from Yes Minister. Sir Humphrey would have t said to, um, to Nicholas Durson, oh, yes, that's a brave plan, Minister. Meaning, don't be fucking stupid. Well, as I say, I mean... She got away with it before. She got away with all kinds of nonsense when she worked at Edinburgh City Council. Because, Aye, well. again, there's no real leadership at this in the city of Edinburgh. The civil servants run absolute rings around the politicians there. And she made a couple of huge cluster fucks and got away <laughs> with it. Because nobody was willing to stomp on her head and toss her out of her 170 grand a year position, which she should have got done a few years ago. I'm very surprised. Many, you'll forgive um, me, Nori, but she ticks far too many boxes and gets on well with so many of these beige ball bags that actually run our country. These people should be taken out. You didn't need pallets on November the 5th. Take them out, chuck a bit of petrol in them and burn them. <laughs> um, anything else of note, guys? Yes, well, it is. I'd like to point out it is um, this weekend we're celebrating 700 years since Scotland's first declaration of independence, which, broadly speaking, is viewed both in America and in Europe outside the United Kingdom as the declaration of Scottish independence and the first document of its kind. Uh, um, Tartan Day in 
the USA is the 6th of April, which is the day that the Declaration of Abroad was signed. So that's why I've got the flag up today and uh, the light shining on the, 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 the document. I always find it quite funny that the Declaration of Abroad says, we the people will pick our kings, but we need the permission of the Pope. <laughs> Didn't he see that? Didn't he see that? <laughs> Scotland's just well, I just, I mean, I just find it quite enlightening about how much well, yeah. it really meant. Yeah, you'd have to compare it to the e asking the permission of the EU to become independent. If Scotland was to ask for recognition from the EU uh, after a, a referendum because the UK was refusing to grant it, then you'd be that'd be a comparable situation. Why is the EU a pint a, anointed by God? The Pope is. We're talking about we're talking about the political side of the being the Pope. Oh at right, the time. okay, okay. Um, I'm not getting involved with anything that's got the tarry in it. <laughs> so, uh, the I suppose the the big celebration is really the uh, film that Leslie Riddick's um, been part of making. Um, we yep, all see yeah, it. Excellent wee film. Yep. Um, I think if I can if I can download it off Vimeo, if I'm allowed to, um, I'll stick it up on the site. But I don't know if I am allowed to. Well, I'll put a link there anyway. Aye, aye, I can do that at least. Uh, so nothing caught anybody's eye, Jimmy. You not got a funny today? No, mate. But I, I just point out to people I've been taking a wee sabbatical this morning from 24 7 news because it gets so far up my nose i can kind of see but it will be interesting to see the numbers over the next couple of days um our numbers look to be climbing england's numbers look to be plateauing a wee bit so it'd be interesting to keep an eye on them over the weekend and see by the middle of next week where we've got to it was also interesting to note last night that um Dominic Rab. No, it wasn't Dominic Rab. It was the health secretary, it wasn't it? That nippy chap whose name escapes me. But he took far more questions. Once again, they're copying the Scottish government. I, oh, I wait a minute. If we only take three questions, we look terrible because Nicola took fourteen. So we better try and go for at least twelve. I I do think they watch her, and and use that as the template. Uh, I did notice the Herald reported there was thirteen deaths in an old folks' home. Yeah, um, I think it's worth. Well, it's given what we've mentioned. That it's worth saying that there's more professional criticism with detail coming out of the uh, UK government's policy uh, to deal with the coronavirus. And what's missing, if they're going to not have release from a lockdown a growth of the deaths, another lockdown, in other words, a chain of lockdowns over the, the rest of the year. What is completely missing at the moment is a team of people to go and identify who's got the virus and to make sure they're quarantined and that all their contacts are identified as well. And that's what they were doing to start with. And but of course it became far too big to cope with, but that, that's the, the argument now. Well, the, the, plan as outlined by the minister is to move from containment into lockdown back to containment and it was the containment phase that they were trying to identify the spread um so that was i think she said that yesterday but apparently yeah. they're going to need they're going to need thousands of volunteers to help identify everybody it's all right, sure. I've phoned them. I've told them you're prepared to walk the streets without a mask. No, I, I heard the, I heard it was you. I can't do it. My wife won't let me do it. <laughs> or, or, or anybody in, I have to say. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you for that. That's, a, that's Sorry, a real Jimmy. lockdown, eh? That's a real aye, lockdown, mate. Aye. Hell, that, what the Prime Minister or the First Minister says, your missus has got you tell. And, <laughs> and that actually occurred 40 years ago. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Jimmy Hutton, Stuart Lockhead. I'm Norris Stewart. Um, if I can sort out a link for the independent, uh, sorry, the Declaration of Our Broth movie, 
I will do so and I'll stick it up as part of this. Cheers for now, folks. Thanks for listening.